All right, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, a couple of recap things from our game last week. MVPs of the game, Daquan Finn at quarterback. I thought he uh, did a really good job of making plays with his feet and handling some tough situations and making off schedule plays and a couple of really big uh, conversion down deals in the first half there that really got us off to a good start. Um, and the kicking game, Swai Ellis continues to improve. Um, I think he was our point leader for the weekend and did a really good job on the kickoff unit and really on all four units and his opportunities to play. And good young players like that to get their opportunity, it's really refreshing to watch them take advantage of their, their moments. And really happy with him and, and proud of where he's coming along here. Uh, Jamal Hines on defense, uh, one of his better games as a Rocket. You know, he consistently is, is uh, where he's supposed to be, does the right thing, and was very productive in the game on Saturday night. So um, lots of things to clean up after that game, you know, as we head into this week. But uh, I think in all three phases, a much better performance week two than maybe we saw week one. So encouraging things there. And now the challenge is to take the jump from week uh, two to three here. And obviously this opponent this weekend is a monster one, and one that's a, a tremendous challenge for us. And program that we have a lot of respect for and the coaching staff we have a lot of respect for and, and know the talent and the history and the tradition that that place has and, and I think it'd be a great opportunity for our guys to go out and compete and, and uh, in a great environment so looking forward to that and uh, with that being said I'll take all your questions. Jason, uh, Toyo in the last two decades has a history of really rising up in these types of games if they don't win them they play well and kind of assert themselves. Um, what's that kind of been the Yeah, I think it's, I think our guys look forward to to playing in these type of games. You know, our our guys are mostly from the state of Ohio or a four hour footprint here, so they know the tradition. They respect what what's go what goes on at in Columbus or at South Bend in South Bend, Indiana last year, or at the University of Michigan or any of these places. And probably most of these guys wanted to be recruited by those type of places. Um, you know, and. I think it's an opportunity for them to, to go and, and play on that stage, and it's something that doesn't happen each and every weekend. So what, something they look forward to, but also I think that uh, it, it, it provides a great focus for a week of preparation where you know you can't allow the moment to, to take control of you. You can allow the crowd to take control of you. You can allow the, the elements of the game to take control of you if you let it. But uh, if you have a great week of practice, that stuff should be off the map. So um, I think historically it's a game we look forward to. The guys they understand the magnitude of it and one that uh, – the competitor in you rises up to the occasion. This, this game in particular Saturday, first time Toyo's ever been on network television in, in prime time. It's Fox. It'll be one of the highest rated games of, of the week. How big of an opportunity do you think it is like as a football program, as a university, as a brand? Yeah, I think a great opportunity. You know, obviously I say this often to, to donors and in and, and public that, you know, the games that we have that are midweek matching games that are across the country that are na nationwide, um, it's an opportunity for us to to be a window into our university. And I think athletics is a unique platform to do that each and every weekend. And uh, this is no different, you know. And like I said, this is a, this is a, it's a major opportunity for us and, and one that uh, we don't take lightly and one that we're certainly looking forward to. Jason, you guys got a lot of huge non-conference challenges since you joined in 09 with Kraft and Ohio State a couple times, Notre Dame, Arkansas. Is it fair to say you can spend the month of straight challenges this week maybe even on a, a different level than, than all of those? Yeah, this is a tremendous football team. This is, you know, three preseason All-Americans on offense. You know, this is a, a coaching staff that does it as good as anybody does in the country. Um, you know, I think there's uh, there's lots of things here that are at play and lots of different variables here that you have to, to bring into focus. You've got to bring your, your A game. You've got to play really, really well and play really sound. You've got to get a couple breaks to go your way. And you've got to hang in there for a full 60-minute fight. And, then, you know, that that's what we're expecting to try to do. And, and I'm sure that that's what, that, you know, that they prepare each and every week for too, as well as a 60 minute fight, no matter who you're playing. How do you handle messaging in a week like this to make sure that it doesn't get bigger than what it is? Or, or do you play it up that way? I mean, I, I think our guys can come up here and sit here and talk about Long Island and can talk about UMass and, you know, and that. But in the back of their head, they're going to say all the, they're going to say all the right stuff. But uh, I think in their mind that I think I'm pretty sure they know the difference between Ohio State and Long Island. So, um, you know, I don't know if there's a lot that needs to be said. You know, I think they understand what it is. I still think there's a lot of stuff to handle in our locker room. I still think there's a lot of stuff to handle in our practice that we have to continue to improve on, regardless of who the week three opponent is. It's still week three. It's a, the infancy stages of a long football season that you have to continuously go on that journey and go on that climb. Um, there's been a lot of improvement from week one to week two. You know, we'll have to see that to, to continue on the journey that we think that we're on uh, from week two to week three. You know, now you add the, the caliber of opponent, that becomes a little bit harder of a challenge, but uh, we've got to have a great week. This day and age, it, it, it's going to happen more often than it used to in the old days, but Dallas having to face his old team, 
Um, how weird is that in college football? Like, obviously, it's going to be more normal now than it used to be, but how is it? Was, how do you think he'll handle that situation? Well, I mean, I think that we dealt with this last year with John Jones going back to Notre Dame. Um, you know, and I thought John had a great game, but I thought John played within the scheme of the defense. You know, if I know Dallas, like I know that, like I think I do, I think that he'll go out and uh, have a level head and play within the scheme of the defense and make the plays that are that come to him and uh, not step out of his lane and try to do too much because he's he's got some chip on his shoulder or something to prove. Um, you know, that's just who he is as a human being. You know what I mean? And you know, great solid human beings in tough moments don't step out of character. So I'd expect him to prepare and have a great week and, and go play well on Saturday night. Uh, college football is college football. I mean, every Saturday is a task in itself. It has its own set of challenges. You know, uh, w we respect everything that goes on in Columbus, Ohio. We respect everything that goes on in about Ohio State. Um, but, you know, I think we we understand that there's challenges each and every week, and you've got to do a good job of preparing for those. Um, and this is, you know, this has its own set of, like I said, uh, things that you got to deal with. So we'll handle them throughout the week and, and go put our best foot forward Saturday night. Well, I think he's drastically improved over a two-year period uh, as a as a guy that's you know plays in a consistent oiled machine of an offense and a, and a coach that has done a good job developing the quarterback through the history of his career. Uh, credit to that kid for doing a great job of uh, you know he took over for a great player um, and uh, you know it, to see him consi consistently improve I think is 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 has been fun to watch and impressive to watch. Um, you know, the receivers change over a couple draft picks. They lose a receiver there, and here comes a couple more guys that, you know, regardless of the level of talent, you have to find continuity and you have to find structure and uh, within the, the offense to play with. And it's been, it's been uh, uh, easy to see that he's been able to do that. So, you know, I don't know the kid personally, but it looks like he's got a great command of what he's, what he's got going on and a great command of, of the people around him. And, you know, no, no different than what the Quan has in this locker room here. So I think that's the role of the quarterback. And if you can consistently grasp that, then you have a chance to, to improve. Um, and I think it, it seems to me from the outside looking in, he's a very humble young man. And I think when you have humility, you always have a chance to get better. So I think that's probably where you're seeing the improvement. Well, I, I get it. I understand. You know, I, I grew up in a, in a house full, a household of Buckeye fans. I understand that. But, uh, you know, like you live in the city of Toledo, like you go to work here every day, you pay taxes here, like root for the home team. And that would be my message. You know, and I don't I don't see I'm not deviating from that. I don't care who we play this weekend. So, you know, uh, root for your hometown team. Like I said, you be where your feet are, that kind of thing. You got your degree from Ohio State or you, you know, you, you you send your kids there. I get that part of it too, and that's a that's awesome to root for them. But uh, you know, I'd like to see the camaraderie, the, the the local crowd rally around this football team each and every weekend. And if Ohio State needs to be your second favorite team, I'm good with that too. You and Ryan Day, I guess, are similar. Um, how would you describe your relationship? Is, is he a guy like you pick his brain for offensive ideas? Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of respect for Coach Day. I think he does it the right way. I think he arguably has the hardest job in America. You know, he had to replace a, a legend um, and a guy that's, you know, won it uh, at the ultimate level. Um, I think he's done a great job of coming in there and commanding, you know, the respect that he deserves through hard work and energy and um, just put a staff around him that, you know, uh, commands the same amount of respect because of, of who they are as people. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're friends and he does a really good job and, and he's a guy that, you uh, you know, is uh, on the cutting edge of what, to, how to play offensive football, and has been for years. So, a guy I have a lot of respect for, and and like I said, I think at the core of it, though, I think that, you know, first and foremost, is a great man and a great husband and a great father, and that's very evident. And you know, and I think that's probably why he's been able to have the success he's had thus far in his career. You said you grew up in a house full of Buckeye fans. Oh, well, don't go there. <laughs> I 
Uh, you know, I don't remember anything really from the Notre Dame trip other than we lost the game, you know, and uh, being in the locker room afterwards. And, um, you know, obviously these are these are great environments for everybody. These are great environments for fans. These are great environments for our teams, uh, you, know, you know, our team and, and our players that go into that and, and our coaches too. But growing up in the state of Ohio, you, you, you understand, you know, you get it. You know, I grew up watching Eddie George and Joey Galloway and all these guys play as well. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be cool to be there. At, uh, but, you know, once that bus – parks and we go into the locker room, it'll be go time just like it is any other time. So it's not going to be, we're not going to go to the stadium and take a thousand pictures and, uh, and you know, post on social media how we're excited to be in, in Ohio Stadium. We're going to go play football and compete for 60 minutes like I expect our team to do each and every weekend. Hey, Nathan. Uh, just to follow up on, on Dallas and Dan, um, you mentioned that, that sort of not playing with a chip on his shoulder on Saturday, but I'm just wondering in general, do you, do you feel like he's playing with one this season in, in sort of a positive way? Did he come to you guys with something that he wanted to show? Yeah, I mean, I think Dallas came with a very open-minded perspective of things, and I think, you know, Jordan's question earlier about the transfer portal I think is fair. I mean, guys are going to be on there, – there's different guys on different rosters all over the country, and you want – you want them to be able to uh, immerse themselves in the fabric of your locker room is probably the best way of putting it. And they got to be great teammates before they can even become a great player. You got to earn their trust and respect of the guys in the locker room. And if you're able to do that, and you're a really solid worker, guys see that. They feed off of that. They see the they see the commitment level. They see the attitude and energy that you're putting into to their foot to this this program rather than worrying about where you came from in the past and always talking about that. And that's one thing I really respect about Dallas. I haven't heard anything about Ohio State. It's all been about Toledo and being here and how he can help this program win and, and how he's turned a page to work for a new opportunity for himself individually. And I, I got a lot of respect for that. Yeah, I think he's been very. Inst he's a very instinctive player. I think he's been a very accountable player. Uh, guy that's the, that is where he's supposed to be. Um, you know, he's got great physical traits and you know length and size and, and his ability to run is, is, uh, has showed up um, in numerous times here the first couple of football games. But like I said, I think the number one thing is him being a great teammate and really understanding that he was coming to, to a situation where we had a good defense returning and how he could fit into that and. Um, how he can help us help help us become a better defense, and, and he's done a good job of that so far. Jason, as you said, long time Ireland didn't see the pass or not exactly Ohio State. What have you seen though in the first few games that gives you hope that, that this can be not just a competitive game that you have a real shot here? Well, I mean, obviously this is a different animal, as I mentioned before. So, you know, we gotta we got to do our best job to make sure that we don't self-inflict. we got to do a good job of making sure we stay ahead of the sticks. Um, you know, Coach Knowles has done a great job of putting a, a defense together and a scheme together that is, is one that forces the offense into mistakes and put pressure on the offense. And I think, obviously, you know, the challenges are very evident, you know, for our defense. They're going to have to defend a great scheme that has great players that plays and tries to dictate the tempo at, a, at, a, at an elite level. And, uh, you know, we'll have our stresses and have our problems in the kicking game, too. So, got to play a complete game. I got to do our best to make sure that Toledo handles what Toledo can control, and then let the other stuff sort itself out. And when you watch the Ohio State's offense on tape, what stands out the most to you about it? I mean, I think there's a playmaker at every position. You know, obviously, very you know great depth at running back. Uh, you know, an elite guy I think is is in the bell cow at running back, and then you bring in Mayan Williams, who's a you know, a, a great, those guys are a great one-two punch. You know, there's elite receivers there. You know, there's solid play at tight end and. You know, the number one thing is that they're not only great players, but they're very well coached all the way across the board. So, you know, it's a, it's definitely a, it's a hard, it's a hard deal to prepare for, for sure. I think from my perspective, it has. You know, obviously, that's a that's a question maybe more for him. But I, I think anytime you you transfer to, to a new environment, what you're giving up is comfort. What you're giving up is, you know, a routine. What you're giving up is, 
you know, maybe an easier way. Uh, you know, when you when you go to another place, there's a lot of unknowns. You know, your daily routine is different. Your your level of routine is is off. And to be in a place where you know people in the around, you know people in our building. Um, you know, we recruited Dallas in high school just like everybody else did. So I think there's a level of comfort here with our coaching staff. I think there's a level of comfort being here close to the city, uh, where he grew up in and where he played at. And then maybe when you have a tough day, there's a there's an outlet there that uh, might not be. Uh, available to you if you went across the country to, to you know to a, a state out west or something to play just because you got you recruited to go play at a different program. Thank you. Thank you.